Well, hello, and welcome to the Perpetually Messy Shop. So far, anytime I've cleaned the shop in the last three months, it's just been a matter of clearing off the workbench because I had some kind of a project to do in here. So today, I'm going to clear off the workbench because I've got another kind of a project to do here. Now, out our back door, that's the door you always see me come out of, which is really our front door. It's kind of a mess there because we like to keep a few gardening tools, pruning shears, things like that. We've got some trekking poles and a few other things. A little broom out there is just always kind of a mess. So what I need to do is make some way of consolidating it all in one spot that doesn't look too awful. Now I've got this very old coat rack that's getting pretty flimsy and pretty weak. We used to kind of keep it on the deck. We'd hang our raincoats here to dry in the winter time, but it really wasn't that essential. So what I'm going to do is put a couple shelves here, maybe some more hooks along the sides to, to hang things on. So that's going to be the next project. Let's get started. So I cleared the workbench again, and I've got this piece of three-quarter inch plywood that should work well for the shelves. Now, the feet on the, um, the hat rack, I guess it is, uh, are about 16 inches. So I'm going to make my shelves 16 inches, so I'm afraid if I make them any wider, something heavy gets set on the end, it's just going to flip right over. Now, as it turns out, the distance between the two uprights, this distance here, is 16 inches as well. But I do want to route a little groove in this. So I'll go with a 3 8 groove on each side. So I'm going to make the shelves 16 and 3 quarters of an inch. That'll give them some real rigidity without having to put any kind of brackets on them or anything. Since it's plywood, that's not a beautiful edge. I'm going to paint it, but the edge is still going to look kind of funky. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm sure I got something on the shelf there that's about 3 quarters of an inch thick and I'll cut some 3 8 inch strip and band around the outside of this. I'm going to go ahead and cut it right to the 16 inch dimension and I'll put a 3 8 inch edging around it. Now I do have another piece of plywood left here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make an upper shelf but I'm going to make it narrower because that way if we're hanging hats or coats or something on there this shelf will be farther behind it and it'll just give one more place to put some small stuff on. Since this piece is narrower, use my cross slide. All right, so I ripped three of these strips. They're three eighths of an inch thick. I'm going to put them on the ends here first. And uh, I'm going to cut them a little longer than they need to be. So they cut off each end. And I can trim them off afterward. It makes it easy to get it exactly right. Now, one thing I did do differently was instead of having the shelves 16 inches wide, I decided to go with 12 inches. Because I held them in place on the thingamajig, the, the cat, hope, coat, hat and coat rack, and it just didn't look right to me. So now I'll go ahead and cut those things. I'll cut four of those to a little over 12 inches. Oh, a couple of 8 inch pieces. 8 inch? 8 inch. Should be, 8 inch will be fine. <laughs> There we go. That looks just right. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the others as well, just so I can get all that done in one shot. All right, I'm going to go with 18 inches on these. Kind of cheating. Instead of <laughs> I can do 18 times two easy enough. <laughs> if I thought about it, I could, but I don't want to think. All right, there we go. Come on, get on there, you. Five and six. All right. Go ahead and cut those. Cut these two. Are done. All right, got all the pieces I need now. It's gonna be noisy, so I gotta fire up the compressor. Okay, here we go. <laughs> gonna glue them and nail them, just because that's the best way to do it. The glue does most of the work here because they're just tiny little brad nails, but the nails will hold it in place and I can keep going. And I'm putting glue on both surfaces just like I was taught long ago in the high school wood shop. I don't even know if they have high school wood shop anymore. The top side is toward me, so I'm just going to get that as even as I can. 
Now the compressor could start at any time, so get ready to plug your ears. There we go. <laughs> make sure, make sure I'm using the same size as the top here. Now this is a situation where you can listen to me because I do know what I'm doing <laughs> when I'm working with wood. Might not always look like it, but I actually do know what I'm doing here. Unlike so many other things, when always my disclaimer, if I'm not here in the shop, don't do as I say. Find a YouTuber who really knows what they're doing. <laughs> Just use me for entertainment purposes. Another reason for putting the ends on first is when this front piece goes on, it'll cover up that end grain there. Not a big deal, but it will make it look a little bit, <laughs> make it look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. Okay, that's all the ends. Now I'll trim those on the table saw here. So it looks like the best way for me to do this is not the safest way, and don't try this unless you're really experienced with your table saw. You be 100% confident. Now what I'll do is I'm going to run through cutting just a little bit off the whole edge of this side here. Do both of these and move the blade over just a 32nd of an inch. Do the same on the other side. Then both sides will be cut perfectly. Now, just like before, the pieces are going to be just a little bit longer than they need to be and as close as flush with the surface as possible. I can always sand the difference. There we go. All three of them with the edging on. Ideally, I'd like to cut it exactly flush with this and I'll see how close I can get. But I don't want to cut into this end piece at all, so I might just try to leave them just slightly long. And it'll sand off really easy later. There we go. That's going to be fine. Tiny little screws. Ow. <laughs> Ouch. It's kind of rickety, so I think what I'm going to do, even though they got a big old screw in right here, I'm going to add a screw on top. Because this screw is located right near the bottom edge of this, of this cross piece, um, but I'm going to go ahead and add another screw up here, and that should, another screw up, <laughs> that should help strengthen it a little bit so it's not quite so floppy. The feet are a little funky too. They're just kind of flopping around loose. And this one has <laughs> part of the foot missing. So I still got a bit of work to do here. But I'm not going to quit till it's right. Yeah, the bottom of this one split up a little too. It looks like it was doweled at one point and it's sort of splitting out here. I think I'll uh, put some glue in here where it's splitting <laughs> all over the place. First, I'm going to sand it because once that's clamped, I won't be able to do anything with it. <laughs> So it's just a big old Phillips head screw in there. I use my big old Phillips head screwdriver. Get it off and see what that looks like. So it's got two dowels, one on each side of the screw. This dowel the glue, glue would come loose, luckily. Same on the other side. And this one, not so much luck. I may have to drill that one out. But I think what I need to do next, try and get some glue in here in the end here where it's all splitting. And in here is that dowel that wouldn't come out. Maybe I can kind of dig it out rather than drill it out because if I drill it out, it's not really going to be a clean hole anymore. I don't get a good hole. It won't be a tight job. But I'm going to go ahead and take the other one off as well. That will make it easier to repair that foot there. Got to make some noise. I'm going to use my compressor to blow that out. The cleaner it is, the better chance I have of that glue holding. All right, enough of that. This one here, same thing, but in this case, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> feels like these two dowels, feels like these two dowels 
are still glued solidly into the leg, so I'm going to leave those alone. But I am going to glue and clamp this in all possible directions. This is my waterproof, not water resistant, waterproof glue. The putty knife is the right tool for that. <laughs> Got to scrape off some of the putty off the putty knife. I don't mind making a mess. I want to get as much glue in there as I can. I'm going to see if I have any dowel stuff around here. I used to have some dowels. I don't know if they're the right size or not. That might just be it. That is it. All right. Put this dowel and glue and put lots of goop everywhere. And make a giant mess. And that's fine. Lots of glue. That's a big mess. I love it. Get this guy in here. That one in there, I'll trim them off later to whatever length they need to be. This is not a hammer. You didn't see me do that. You had plenty of glue on me too. That does seem like an awful lot of clamps, but it's not going to hurt anything having more clamps on us. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, well, I am going to wipe off some of that excess glue because it's a lot easier than sanding it off later. All right, that's just a damp rag. The glue is only waterproof after it dries. Right now, it's pretty water soluble. All right, that looks good. And these others here, I can see it's the same thing. They have one screw and one dowel. <clears throat> I'm not going to take it apart to manage that dowel. I think I'm just going to clamp this, throw another screw in, call it good. All right, here we go. Oh. It's getting heavy. All right, that's rolling nicely. Let's see about the other end. It's really a little harder. I like these trim head screws because the threads on them are kind of a little serrated. So they're cutting as they go. And with the small head and the serrated threads, it really minimizes, doesn't eliminate, but minimizes the chance of the wood splitting. Okay, we are getting better all the time here. It's a little feet. This one here has got this piece that fell out. I'm gonna cut a little piece of wood here. And I'm gonna glue it on here and then cut it out to make it fit that little foot. I, I could leave that, but I don't wanna. That looks pretty good, first try. I'm gonna sand this surface here down just a little bit. I'm gonna do it by hand. I just wanna clean it up a little bit. Make sure that glue will hold okay. You get lots of glue all over the place. I don't want two on there. All right. I don't like this. It's not holding well enough. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Set that aside. That's it for the roof sanding. I don't want to take those clamps off till tomorrow. It's getting later in the afternoon. What I'm going to work on now is routing the grooves in the edge of these two vertical pieces here for the shelves to fit in. Now, it doesn't look like much, but what I've got here is kind of a thing I made a long time ago for just that purpose. So this is my template for cutting the grooves in these vertical pieces here. The way it works is I got a piece of quarter inch melamine that years ago I screwed on a piece of three quarter inch oak. Now when I have the right size bit in my router, when I run the edge of the router table, that's a little round base of the router, up against the oak here, the cutter rides right along the edge of this melamine. I just take my piece, I put it in between them, push them tight together and either clamp them or screw them onto something. In this case I screwed them onto these two boards here. The next thing I need to do is get the depth exactly right. Now the way I test that is I made a test cut in two pieces. Always make test cuts. That way if you mess something up, it's a little piece like this, you can throw it away. You don't have to throw this away and start over. So now when I place these on each side of the shelf, it should measure exactly 16 inches in between. I can pretty quickly cut the one, two, three, six grooves and uh, put the piece back on that I have to take off, and it should be right. All right, so it's the next day. 
or so. <laughs> I can take the clamps off now. That glue should be plenty dry. That looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this and give you a closer look at it. See that? Now we got a little split here, but um, that just, I wasn't able to clamp that tight enough. That should be fine. And this edge here, that's where we had that big crack opening up all along the way there. This is beautiful. I think it's gonna work just great. All right, so with that done, it's time to cut the grooves in here that are gonna hold the shelves up. Now, when I, I, I'm gonna have to take this piece out because I want this shelf to sit right on top of that. So I'm gonna take my square, put a line right at the top edge of the shelf. But before I do that, I wanna put this groove in first and the top groove as well, just because then I can take this out, finish my grooves, put it back, and I'll be good to go. I wasn't exactly sure how far to space the shelves apart. I don't really know what we're gonna put on there, but um, just as a starting point, I found the, the tallest one gallon plastic jug we have, and I measured it, and it was about 12 inches. So I'm gonna leave 13 inches between the shelves. <laughs> now, I don't know if I'm ever gonna put a one gallon jug on here, but the 13 inches looks about right anyway. Now, because this edging on the shelf is about 7 eighths of an inch, I made my marks 14 inches apart <laughs> because it's easier than trying to figure 13 and 7 eighths twice. So that would give me actually just slightly over 13 inside there. I also pre-painted the bottom of them because that will be harder to paint later when it's all together. And I laid this out 14 inches apart. Okay, now these marks are showing the bottom of the shelf. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put an X. That's called a witness mark on the side of the line that I want the groove to be. Because once you get this apart, it is real easy to put the groove on the wrong side. So we'll flip this over. Before I went any further, I measured from the bottom of these feet to the top of this, this brace here. That's where I'm starting my 14 inch measurements from. That measurement was exactly the same on both sides. Never take, never take anything for granted. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to cut these two upper grooves first and then I'll probably go ahead and put this shelf in that way when I take this brace out the whole thing won't be floppy. Start up here and I'm also going to clamp it in place. Now, I want to be really careful with these measurements. If I'm not really careful with any of these, the shelves front to back could end up up or down and side to side, it could be pretty wonky. <laughs> I just really can't live with that. Here we go. All right, let's see how it looks. Oh, that fits right in there. That's beautiful. The reason I go back and forth through there is the diameter of my cutter bit is a little less than the width the groove has to be. So first I ride it along this edge here, move it over here, and bring it back on that side. Next I'll flip it over and cut these two grooves. And then I'm going to go ahead and probably screw this shelf in. I can take the brace out, cut these two, put the brace back in again. I can screw the shelves in and start thinking about getting the feet back on the bottom. So now my plan here is to center these shelves on the uprights. Best way to do that is with a tape measure. All right, what the heck? I'm gonna put this one in too, just because I want to see what it looks like. Now this is a narrower shelf. And what I'm gonna do with it is really let it stick out toward the back of the, um, of the shelves here and kind of even with the front. So that way if we're hanging hats or anything up on the top of this, I'm gonna put those hooks back that'll go in front of the shelf. <laughs> Looks like it's still kind of swoop-de-doo here. Try to pretend I did it on purpose to look more artistic. 
Now I'll be able to take the lower brace off, cut the grooves, put the bottom shelf on, and we'll start putting it back together on its feet. It is about 102. I think this might have been one of those IKEA type kits where you assemble the whole thing yourself. Now it's time to make the last two cuts, put the last shelf in, then I can get onto the feet. You probably shouldn't set your router down while it's still spinning. I want you to hold it in your hand until it completely stops. It's a lot safer that way. Do as I say, not as I do. Well, now that is starting to look pretty good. It's time to get the feet back on. I did do a little work on one of the feet, so I'm going to have to finish that up first. So I want to uh, trim off these dowels. Now what I do want to do is just a slight chamfer around the edge of these dowels. You can see those, that, well you can't see it, but these dowels have it. I don't know if you remember, I had a glue little piece on here and I left it pretty rough. I cut it close to the curve here. I think I'll be able to take my sander and finish that off. That where it sticks out there a little bit. I want to do that on the table saw freehand. I don't want you doing that on the table saw freehand unless you really know what you're doing. There we go. That's the part that's repaired. That came out really nice. <laughs> it's waterproof. It's not waterproof. It's good. Oh well. It is what it is. I want to get some glue on this around those. Across the bottom. Of course, we're going to get across the bottom. Get that on there. Tap that on. See how long that is? That thing's huge. Always pays to have a bunch of bit holders. We are really looking good here. Always put glue on both surfaces. That looks pretty good. Take a look. All right, so nothing left to do but paint. And I'm sure I'm gonna need two coats on this. That's the first coat. I'm gonna give it a chance to dry a little while. I'll go ahead and, and sand down and spray these uh, coat hooks. I think I've talked about this before in some of my other videos. I'm not trying to really sand it down to bare metal or make it smooth. I just want to uh, give it a little, little tooth is what that's called. Give it something for that paint to hang on to. Okay, that's the last one of those. And yes, I'm gonna paint the screws too. I gotta sand those a little bit. The easy way to do that is just put my sandpaper on the table. I'm obviously not just going to uh, hold all these little screws in my fingers and paint them. So what I'll do is I'll, <laughs> I'm just going to just drive a little bit into this piece of pine. Pine's nice and soft and easy. Now, I'm not really sure what color to paint all this stuff, but um, this greenish thing is kind of an accent color on the house and the trim is white. So I'm gonna start with just painting all these white and see how it looks. If I don't like it, it's easy enough to spray another coat on them of some other color. You shake it up. I think it says it's supposed to shake it for a full minute. I almost never do. That's not a recommendation. Now I think this paint's gonna dry pretty quick in the heat too. Okay, I got the second coat of, I'll call it green on the shelves. I got the second coat of white on the on the coat hooks and on the screws. So tomorrow I'll put the coat hooks onto the shelves, then I'll be able to carry it all out, put it by the back door of the house. We can see how it looks. I think it's gonna look great. I know it's gonna be really functional. It's 105 degrees out, so I don't know how long I'm gonna to last today, but I really do wanna get all that coat and hat hooks put on the rack here so I can get it over by the, by the uh, back door, really our front door. Now my first thought was for our brim style hats, they're not really going to work out here on the front. So I'll put a couple of hooks here for the uh, ball cap style hats. And my first thought for these was to put them just to lay that one on top of there. But this just looks kind of silly to me. So I am going to put a hook here at the top. So it'll kind of hang like that. And then uh, I'll put another hook here and maybe even one more hook there. 
So now I measured the, the biggest, widest brim hat that we had, and it was about 12 inches from the back of the head to the uh, bottom of the brim here. I'm going to put these hooks on the side, 14 inches apart. I'm really just kind of guessing here. I've never built anything like this. And uh, in the front here, I divided it by four, and then I put, which is 16 inches. So I'm coming in four inches on each side. That'll leave me four inches from the edge here and uh, eight inches in between. That should work out okay. All right. So just to let you know what my thinking is here and to let you know that I did give it thought. I want to be real careful because <laughs> I'd like to avoid scratching the paint as much as possible. Got a big scratch in it already. I think I can touch it up by maybe taking a little artist brush, spraying some of the white paint into the cap and just dabbing it on there afterward. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be a little more careful now. Thought I was being careful before. Clearly I was wrong. Right. That looks good. I guess, the, I guess this is the side. I think that looks all right. Anyway, it's time to take it over there and see how it looks. Well, that looks good. I think it's done. That kind of cleans up the space and gives us a place to set more stuff.